Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name's Lara and today we are doing another pick a symbol, pick a set of hands reading and we are focusing in on the next three months for you in your love life. So once you've relaxed, ask the universe what is in store for me over the next three months in my love and romantic life. Once you've done so, take a look at all three sets of hands and select whichever one you feel most drawn to. We have group number one. I don't know how to describe the difference between these groups, so you you can see the screen. Group one, group two, or group three. <laughs> we have the hands that are like flexed a little bit, the hands that are like interlocked, and then the hands that are interlocked but facing downwards, so... <laughs> I guess just select whichever one you feel most drawn to and you can either watch through or skip ahead to your reading using the timestamps. I also just want to remind you guys that I do offer personal psychic readings. If you're in a very particular life situation or relationship with very specific questions, sometimes it's best to just get a personal psychic reading. So the link to that is on my website, spiritpsychic.org. Link to that is always in the description. I also offer spiritual life coaching sessions there and my goddess energy intention oil and my blog. So everything's kind of just there for you to peruse. Go ahead and check it out. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And let's begin your reading. Hello, group number one, and welcome to your reading. Let's see what's going to happen in your love life over the next three months. The rune that came out for you guys is called Isa, and this is the rune of ice, and the shape of it kind of resembles an icicle. Guys, <laughs> I'm seeing that I just like found myself in the middle of a soap opera here with your reading, okay? I am getting a situation where... Most of you are involved with someone who seems to be moving slower than you or you've just been putting a lot of expectations and pressure on this person. Um, and this could be normal expectations and pressure. Like, hey, I want a life partner. I want marriage. I want, you know, someone to like be a partner with me through life and, you know, into our old age and retirement and all that. And this person's kind of giving confusing energy, dragging their feet. I don't know. But it's, we're getting like an emotional icy period in your love life. And I know some of you guys are so mad. Okay, so mad that this message is coming up. But hear me out. Do not click off just yet. This is so needed. The next three months, I actually see you really for the first time in a long time. I just had the song, um, for the first time in forever. But isn't that from the movie Frozen too? Um, where was I going with that? You're, you, this is the first time in a long time you're actually focusing on yourself. And it's interesting that we bring up the movie Frozen, because now that I'm thinking about it, the whole plot line of that, right? The younger sister <clears throat> tries to marry this guy she just met. <laughs> And he turns out to be a schmuck. And then along, you know, trying to figure out whatever the heck was going on in that movie and getting her sister who became like frozen or whatever. Um, she had this guy tag along on her adventures who was just this average everyday guy, you know, nothing special. <laughs> but they actually turn out to be quite compatible and quite lovely together. So I feel like you, um, what was her name? Not Elsa, the other one. Anna, I feel like you're giving me Anna energy here, guys. Like, you kind of ran into the schmuck and, you know, you, <laughs> some of you might still be with them, so don't be offended, but they're kind of like, I don't know, you're kind of trying to rush into this life partnership and spirit is kind of saying, listen, it's not that we're saying no, it's not that we're saying not with this person, it's not that we're saying anything of that nature. We're telling you that you need to be focusing on you right now, okay? On you right now. Group number one, you guys are very compassionate, very empathetic, very loving. Like, I am just getting a flood of just caring for other people all the time. You're a natural caregiver. You probably have been in caregiving situations, whether you cared for elderly folk or children or pets or something. Like, you always constantly find yourself 
worrying about the people around you and focusing too much on your relationships, I actually want to say. You know, you derive a lot of happiness from your relationships and your friendships and the people around you. And Spirit's kind of showing me this vision of you being too at a whim when it comes to the people in your life. You know, you're getting too emotionally reactive. Like say all of your friends are busy. Um, you're going through an emotionally icy time. You know, I, I can see you getting really upset by that. And Spirit's saying, we want to take you from a place where you get us upset by that and bring you back to this place where you care for yourself enough to where every other relationship in your life is just a beautiful added addition to your life. So moral of the story here is that the next three months, um, we actually see you really focusing on your goals, on your career, on getting your finances in order, getting your health in order. Okay, so focus on doing those things. I'm seeing exercise. I'm seeing change of appearance. Someone's getting a tattoo. Someone's getting like a haircut, um, making some type of change physically. I'm seeing people really focusing on their business, especially if you have your own business focusing on career, on school, whatever it is you have going on in your life, your hobbies, okay, your creative projects especially, like getting things done around the house. I am seeing um, all of those things just kind of really vibing with yourself and your own little life that you have there, right? Your own little corner of the world. You're really vibing with it for the next three months. And it is actually going to drastically ch change and transform your romantic life, okay? Also, I'm seeing um, another message here of, Pay more attention to entertainment, okay? Spirit's saying you have a problem with being almost too productive. And I think you know this. Some of you might be suspected workaholics or just feel like you always constantly have to be doing something or else you get really antsy. Spirit is saying another way to put that that might make sense to you is that you have a lot of anxiety, okay? That anxiety is forcing you to be someone who is constantly feeling like they need to do someone. So Spirit is saying to... Focus on entertainment more, okay? Um, if you're somebody who used to love reading, for example, and you don't have the time for reading, you actually do have the time for reading. You're just choosing to let your anxiety stop you from reading, okay? Or video games. I just got back into video gaming recently. Um, that might be something that you want to do. Or just whatever it is that you used to do that you just don't have the time for anymore. Spirit is saying do more of those time-wasting activities. <laughs> you know, get into a really nice show that is binge-watchy binge watchy wow um do these things that have no productive value <laughs> i think this might be one of the first times in a reading i'm actually getting messages where i'm saying like do less <laughs> okay group number one do less the problem is you feel like everyone around you just can't match your level of um commitment and attention and the amount you pour into relationships, it almost, you're starting to feel like no one's going to be able to match this. And Spirit's like, yeah, you're right. Because you're psychotic, group number one. Go relax. <laughs> no, no one can match this because, you know, people need time to relax and you are like a tank. Like you are a machine that just will not stop. <laughs> so sit down and shut up, group number one. Oh man. Oh, coffee break. Mm hmm. All right, so that was the most violent, like, relaxation message I've ever gotten in a reading. <laughs> Just sit down and stop doing stuff, group number one. Oh, my gosh. But, oh, so anyways, this is going to be transformative for your relationships because during this icy phase where, you know, there's not really anything going on. Here's the thing. I, I think if you're in a dating predicament or you're in a relationship with someone and you're kind of waiting for something to happen... Spirit is saying, like, instead of waiting, what if we just accept the situation exactly how it is right now and don't try to change it for the next, like, three months or so and instead focus on changing yourself and your life to be more happy? Does that make sense? You're focusing so much on changing your relationship, um, helping other people around you become a better person to take care of your needs, to be happy. And Spirit's saying, what if we put that same amount of energy, time, and attention into yourself, okay, instead of other people, okay, so instead of waiting around for, for your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, to, you know, get their act together, get their money together, you know, et cetera, et cetera, so that they can make, you know, big old life changes with you or support you better, what if we poured that energy and intention into our career, into our business, into our health, how much happier 
would we be? And through that process, you'll actually find the way that you're approaching this relationship and what you want from this relationship is actually going to change. Okay, so Spirit's saying what you want right now is not what you're going to want in three months' time. You got to focus on yourself and really pour your energy into your own cup. I, it's, I feel like it's not sinking in quite as much as it should, group number one. I got the goosebumps. Like, I feel like this is a hard message for you to receive because it's just not how your brain works or has been working for a while. But we really have this message here, really have this message. Like, you don't understand how much you focus on other people, how much your happiness is derived from other people. It's time to reclaim that happiness, that power. Honestly, instead of trying to change the situation, kind of envision yourself as single again if you aren't single. Get into that energy. Remember when you were single and, you know, you had time to focus on your hobbies, focus on, like, reading and whatever and friends and try to step into that energy. You know, I, I feel some of you might be, um, I don't want to say codependent. Some of you might be codependent, but, like, I don't, you just put too much into relationships. Too much. You're too, you're too loving, group number one. Reel it back in. Focus on a little self-love. All right. That was a long intro. Let's uh, dive into the tarot. I, it's been a while since I've done a very heavy tarot reading. You know, I love using oracle cards. And we are going to pull some oracle cards. I actually already pulled them. We'll look at them later. But let's just dive into the tarot and see what the story is for the next three months for you guys. All right, I'm feeling eight this time around. And there's no rhyme or reason. We're just seeing what comes up. What cards want to come out for you, okay? So first card out, we have the Magician reversed. Yep, okay, the, someone has the power to transform this relationship and they're choosing not to use it, all right? This is giving me, like you might be dating someone or with someone who's just not a good leader. <laughs> They're just not taking the initiative. And here's the thing, guys. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm not saying, you know, you need to break up with them. If you want to do that, that's on you. You know, your intuition can tell you what to do there. However, it's just they're at a point in this timeline where they're not taking any action. They're not doing anything. They're not getting the ball rolling. They're not turning the gears in this relationship. It doesn't seem to be going anywhere, okay? So what do we mean when we mean going anywhere in relationships? I mean like growing together or developing together in a way that's very practical down to earth. So for example, like moving in together, um, elevating your level of commitment, you know, becoming closer through planning on like traveling more or like doing more experiences that can bring you together. It seems like this person is just kind of at the whim of the universe. Like you might do some things here and there that grow you and help you become more close with this person, but it seems like they're all circumstantial. Like, oh, I just so happened to see this thing, this opportunity. Like, would you like to go with me? And then you become closer. You know, it's not really, they're not really planning. They're not really... Ball's not moving, y'all. <laughs> Ball's in their court. They ain't doing nothing with it. They're sitting on it. Um, they're they're not shooting, you know. They're not taking that leap of faith. Mm. And again, not a bad person. It might be circumstantial um, where they're at in their life. You know, they just aren't doing that. We have the King of Cups reversed, which is kind of a confirmation of what we um, just saw there. Yeah. King of Cups is someone who would be very romantic, very sensual, very emotionally open, okay? King of Cups is someone who's um, who's sensitive. They're soft. They're kind. I know a King of Cups in my life. I'm actually not with them romantically. I just know who they are. They're a water sign. Um, very mature man who is like one of the most emotionally mature person people I've ever met in my life. Like super emotionally intelligent. And they don't open up super easy, you know. It takes time to get to know them, you know, that you earn their their trust, their intimacy. It, it's very healthy, honestly. Um, so that is who this person would be if they took more initiative in their life, okay? They could be a water sign, Cancer, or Scorpio, Pisces. They don't have to be. They could have strong water placements, or you might be a water placement. There's just a lot of water energy here in general. But in reverse, you know, this King of Cups is kind of, I want to say, okay, this might come off as like rude or something, but I, I want to say like this person should be in therapy if they're not. <laughs> like they should be doing more inner healing work. They should be working on themselves more, but they're not. 
So that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting here. And it's like, I feel group number one, you can see their potential. Like you can see how great they could be because you're just a wonderful person. And, oh, it's called the Michelangelo effect, actually. I've heard of that phrase recently when you're in a relationship and you truly, truly can see the best in someone. You know, they come to you with their ideas. You can see them succeeding in those ideas and being like their best version. And you're constantly pushing that person to be that best version. And it's a beautiful thing. You know, that's a great quality to have. But you have to make sure that you're dating other people who are also having this Michelangelo effect, you know, so you lift each other up constantly and you're constantly growing with each other. I don't, hmm, I don't feel like your person has adequate self-love, self-care. Like they're not pouring enough energy into themselves, but it's funny because I don't think you are either. And I think you've manifested this person as a reflection of your own energy in a way. And you might've been thinking and asking the universe, like how, why is this, why did I connect with this person? How are they like, who are they in my life? Why are they here? They are a reflection of your energy in a way. You know, you just want them to take better care of themselves, get the help that they need, you know, get adequate sleep, whatever it is that they're not doing, you keep pushing and pushing and pushing, like, just do this, do this, do this, and you would be so much better. And that's what spirit is saying. Like, you're so focused on this other person that you don't realize you're not even focusing on yourself. So all of the qualities that annoy you about them, you actually possess yourself. (laughs) And that's, like, the truth in any relationship. Any connection doesn't even have to be romantic. That is the truth in all of those connections. What bothers you in other people is only a reflection of something that bothers you about yourself. The qualities you love in other people are qualities you yourself possess. And being someone with the Michelangelo effect, who sees the best in everyone, you're a beautiful, beautiful, loving soul. Like, the fact that you can see the best in everyone just shows how wonderful you are, right? But you're focusing so much on what this person isn't doing for themselves, and you're trying to push this person. You're spending a lot of energy talking to this person, trying to push them to do more, take better care of themselves, you know, that you're actually, that is energy that should be spent on yourself, your own projects, your own time, you know, and Spirit's saying, what if in the next three months we kind of pull our energies back? Because here's the thing, you feel like it's not being returned to you. You feel like, you know, you're pouring, pouring, pouring. They're not pouring back. And it can be frustrating. It can be emotionally volatile. And Spirit's saying, what if we pull back and meet them where they're at? give what they're giving to us and that extra energy that you have that you were pouring into this person, spend that on you, okay? Doing your projects, you know, having them come to you. If they don't want to come to you, well then, okay, I'm staying in for the night. I'm, I'm reading my book, you know? I'm, I'm doing whatever it is that I'm doing that is not productive because spirit told me to relax. <laughs> All right? Mm. We have the chariot in reverse, guys. Lots of cancer energy here, all right? I'm just going to say it. The person I was thinking of with the King of Cups reversed, or upright, when I was explaining that I know someone who's extremely emotionally intelligent, they are a cancer. And the chariot is the cancer card, so lots of cancer energy coming out here. Also, I get get, um, Aries energy with the magician. So your person might have these qualities, um... Or actually, you know, these these placements in their chart, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, most likely. Chariot in reverse, guys. Let's talk about it. This is, you know, you have this desire to move forward. You want to be life partners, et cetera, et cetera. Like, you just want to move forward in your stinking relationship. That is exactly what I'm getting in this re- reading. In reverse, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. And it's frustrating to you. Ice cold energy. You know, when we had this Issa rune come out, I know many of you felt reactive to when I said, you know, this is an emotionally icy time. This is kind of like things aren't really moving. What, and I I imagine that you imagined that the people around you aren't moving. You know, they're not ever going to change. But actually, what if this rune means, this is your, your advice here. Stop trying to move this forward. Stop pouring all your energy into this. And instead, focus on moving your own gosh darn life forward, okay? If you are frustrated that the people around you are busy or just not doing as much as you are or just not taking care of the relationship or you as much as they should be, you know, that is your sign to 
do it yourself, you know, take care of yourself. Mm. We have the Empress in reverse. All of these cards are coming out reversed, guys. Yeah, th this is major healing going on. A major shift in energy, I'm feeling. We have three major Arcana cards here, guys. The next three months is very significant because your whole... I'm seeing it's like a whole radical change in your perception, how you approach this relationship if you are in one or this person that you're dealing with. Like, complete and utter change in how you go about things. Even if you're single, complete and utter change in how you go about things. Like, you know, <clears throat> it's more so you focusing on you and then whoever happens to show up is going to show up, you know? And if you're actively dating and like searching and going out with people, you know, you're really learning this valuable lesson of only pouring energy into those who pour energy into you. And if you find yourself, and here's the thing, here's the kicker, guys. I think you resist this message because you're someone who's like naturally really giving and you don't want to be in a connection with someone who's not going to give that back. Like you don't want to pull your love back. You know, you want to love fully without any restraints. You don't want to pull it back. It's like, I don't want to, you know, pull back my time and energy, but honey boo boo bears, that is called boundaries. Okay. Boundaries. You know how much love you are capable of giving. But when you're dealing with people who aren't giving the same, for whatever reason, they don't even have to be a bad person. It could just be that they're busy in life. It's time for you to pull those energies back. You know, invest them into places and people who are investing back. Otherwise, you're just wasting your life force energy. You're draining it into someone or something who's not reciprocating it. Like that is an utter drain. It is like investing all of your money into a failing business. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? It's not giving you anything back. You know, energy and money are very similar here, guys. The Empress in reverse is saying there's a big self-love message. You know, the Empress, she focuses on her, on her throne. Look at, look at that fur. Look at the details in her throne, in her garden. She has her little lyre here. You know, she's practicing her music. She's dressing nice. She's engaging in her hobbies. You know, she has her own little life here, her own little corner of the world her own little home or room or whatever the heck you got going on, her own little car, whatever you have going for you, you know, focus on that. Focus on that and let them come to you. Mmm. Mmm. I, okay, I just got a vision. <laughs> I got a vision of like a female lioness. And you know, lionesses, they don't go out of their way in search of male lions. They do not because, you know, they're, they're hot in their own right. Okay. They, they do their own thing. They're powerful. All right. The guys can come to them. And I, I don't care if you're like, it doesn't matter if you're heterosexual. It doesn't matter if you're female, male, whatever you want to identify as. You've just been going way out of your way <laughs> for the people in your life. And it's like, what if we instead just poured that energy to us, let them come to us, okay? They can meet us where we're at, all right? That is the attitude you need to take on because you've just been way too giving, doing way too much here. All right. We have the devil. Mm, yeah, the devil coming out right underneath that magician reverse, guys. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I feel like... I want to absolutely roast the person that you're dealing with, but I'm not going to do that because I feel like you're going to heavily resist it. I feel that you genuinely love whoever this person is and you can see the best in them. And I, I almost feel like your spirit guys have given up on, <laughs> on trying to get you to leave this person. All right, they're, now they're saying if you're gonna stay with this person, at least make it equal. It's fine. Honestly, you don't have to completely get rid of anyone in your life unless they're abusive, unless they're a narcissist. Then my advice is always just get rid of them. Block them completely from your life. It has been statistically proven that that is the best road to happiness, okay? But if this is a person who just kind of isn't, they're, they're either like a mediocre partner, they don't got much to offer, whatever. Meet them where they're at, y'all. Take your power back. Don't be out here buying them flowers, doing the most for them, constantly going to them when they're not giving you that same energy back for whatever reason. Okay, don't be offering them actions that lead towards long-term commitment when they haven't offered you that, you know? Mm, I have a friend, I have a friend who 
was in this situation. You know, they were viewing someone they were dating as like a long-term partner and they were going out of their way to do so much to like support the longevity of this relationship. Like they were really focusing on like integrating their families and, you know, learning all about their culture and kind of changing their own long-term plans. Like they wanted to make a move. They didn't make a move because they wanted to stay close to this person and really work with them and on their time and their schedule. But their partner was not doing the same thing. They weren't offering commitment. They weren't, you know, promising anything. They weren't given the same commitment to longevity back. You know, they could say, oh, I love you. You're my, you're my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my partner, whatever. But they weren't doing the same things to promote the longevity of the relationship. They weren't getting therapy. They weren't, you know, figuring out healthier ways of living, existing, and being in relationship. They just weren't giving the same energy back. And, you know, that friend had to really learn, you know, to pull back their own commitment. You know, they stopped doing a lot of things for the longevity and they started viewing themselves more as single. You know, they started viewing themselves more as like, okay, well, you know, if I do want to move in the future and I'm not married to this person, I'm not living with them. There's no plans of that going on. I'm, I'm going to make that move. You know, they started viewing themselves more like that and they noticed that their emotional <clears throat> emotional volatile ways that they were approaching this relationship you know the ups and downs they were having huge huge like I love them I hate them moments that all evened out and became very peaceful once they decided to kind of take their commitment and their power back that wasn't being returned to them and I, I feel like you're in a very similar situation here where it's like you're very emotional emotionally volatile because you're giving so much that's not being returned back to you and your intuition is trying to tell you like listen Pull back the reins. And it doesn't have to be a black or white situation, folks. You know, it doesn't have to be, I have to leave them now <laughs> and never talk to them again. You know, I feel like you resist that message. It doesn't have to be that far. And that's what Spirit's trying to tell you. Like, we're not going to give you crystal clear cut answers like leave them or marry them. What if it's something in the middle? What if it's like pull back your energies to where what they can offer you? Like, you don't have to burn bridges here. But like, what how you've been approaching this is not fair. It's not equal. Okay. High priestess in reverse. You're having a hard time listening to your intuition. <laughs> and I feel like your intuition is telling you exactly what we just told you. Like your intuition is trying to tell you how to navigate this in a more gray middle ground type of way, but that can be really hard to listen to. And I'm saying that as a psychic medium, it can be hard to listen to your own intuition, especially when the answers aren't as like clear cut as they could be. Hmm. <laughs> We have the princess of pentacles reversed. Yeah, this really is bringing me back to like just not offering the commitment that you need. Someone's just not offering it. And I almost, I don't even feel like they're lying to you. I feel like mm, some of you might feel like you've been led on a little bit because it seemed when you met this person that they were really interested in something long term. And then now like you're here and it's like, where's it at though? Like, where's the conversation at? It's very confusing. Some of you guys might be feeling a little bit let on. Like I was pretty crystal clear about my intentions from the jump, but we don't see that coming from you. And again, I feel like the reason for this person's confusion is because like, like I said earlier, this is someone who needs therapy. Like they need more emotional intelligence and they're just not giving me that vibe. They're not, it doesn't, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm not saying they're a bad person. It's just they needed to learn how to operate emotions in a healthy way or relationships in a health, healthy way. And I, I, it's, is it bad to say like, I don't think this person's bad. I think they're stupid. <laughs> I think they, mm, mm, they just, I don't know. I don't know. But here's the thing, guys. I feel like I kind of just called you stupid in a way because you are kind of reflecting their energy too. <laughs> I love you, group number one. I'm sorry. Wow. The, uh, everyone's like, unsubscribe. <laughs> Call me stupid now. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Hit that subscribe button. It's fine. Listen, sometimes we need these messages. You're being asked to just focus on you. Final tarot card. Peace. Two of swords reversed. I do see a lot of peace coming in for you in the next three months because, again, like so much energy was 
being poured into this situation, not getting what you want, like trying to figure it out. It's just been stressful. I'm getting so much tired energy from you. Like this is tiring. This is emotionally volatile. Like I can't let this person go. I don't want to let this person go. I don't want to let the situation go, but like, my God, it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. They don't seem to be offering me the same energy. Okay. Well, okay. If you're not ready to let them go, that's on you. That's totally fine. But at least pull your energy back. Start focusing your energy on things that do give you returns. Okay. Purely business. Invest your energy, invest your money into what is giving you returns. Okay. Those returns could be like going to the gym, getting healthy. That'll help your mental health. Okay. It could be, you know, focusing more time, like instead of going to this person all the time and they're not doing much for you and you kind of leave feeling a little sad, a little drained. Instead of doing that, why don't you like read your book, play your video game, watch your movie, binge watch a show. (laughs) You're too much in your head. And Spears actually kind of saying, you know, a little bit of distraction might not hurt you. (laughs) Mm, I see peace coming in for you for the next three months. And by focusing on yourself so much, you're going to change your whole perception and what you want from this person. It is going to change 100%. And you will find a happy medium, I feel. Okay. So messages from Mama Moon. You know, she's my favorite guy to go to for relationships. We have meditate and contemplate new moon in Pisces. Yeah, we just had this new moon. This is really telling you not to not to make too many moves here, guys. You know, meditate, contemplate, sit still. This is an energy of stillness. Your whole reading's giving me stillness. No forward movement. <clears throat> now, I'm telling you as a psychic right now, this a lot of these cards, a lot of these messages, this rune are all showing no forward movement. So you can either suffer through the next three months trying to push something that's not moving, or you can go within and move forward in your own ways, in ways that you have control of. You know, you can move your health forward by, you know, eating more healthy, exercising. You can work on your mental health. You can work on your creative projects, on your business, on your entertainment, on your friendships, okay? You can move forward in your own way, but if you're going to spend the next three months constantly trying to push this block of concrete that is not moving forward, which is whoever this is, it ain't going to work, okay? Stop pushing the agenda, Focus on what returns energy to you. You know, I honestly like stop focusing on this. Focus on what returns energy to you and you will find you're so much more peaceful in the next three months. I am seeing way less emotional, volatile energies, ups and downs, confusion. Like you've been in a dark place emotionally recently because of this situation. It's all going to change. Like we're refinding peace. And it's almost like because your whole perspective and energy changes, this person's also going to take note of that, okay? So their actions and behaviors might change as well because your energy changes. It is safe for you to love. These are messages from the Romance Angels. Open your heart to give and receive the highest love of all. Passion, allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. And wedding, this situation involves marriage. This might be something that was kind of <clears throat> up in the air about this connection. Like maybe that is something that somebody's kind of waiting on. <laughs> if that makes sense, like trying to get on the same page about commitment, long-term commitment. It doesn't have to be a wedding. I know not everyone's into marriage, but some type of commitment. Commitment is the key word here. <clears throat> page of pentacles reversed. You don't feel like this person's offering it as much as you're offering it to them. Also, there might be weddings uh, this year in the next three months or engagements of some sort. There's just, this situation involves commitment. Mm. What is committed to you? And are you committed to something or someone who's not committed to you? And I'm not talking like, you know, monogamy. I'm not talking like committed as in cheating. I'm talking committed as in like, I'm going to show up in your life. I'm going to show up to your family parties. I'm going to, you know live with you. I'm going to be a life partner. All Life partnership. That is the key phrase here that keeps popping up. Like, are you committed to a life partnership or are we just messing around? Like, even if you're in a long-term serious connection, that doesn't mean they're committed to you. (laughs) All right. Doesn't mean 
And that that's not a bad thing either. Like, let's redefine our relationships. Relationships can be whatever you want them to be. Mm. I'm seeing a lot of emotional maturing over the next three months for you and this person. But it's only going to happen for them if it happens for you because you guys are kind of mirroring each other in a way. So mm, focus on you, group number one. Focus on you. All right. Ah! <laughs> okay, so the cards that just flew out, this one. And it says, twin flames, your passion ignites. So this is someone you're really passionate about. And I do get like a lot of physical um, passion as well, which kind of makes the situation a little bit more complicated because, you know, it's easy to like kind of focus on yourself a bit more um, when you're like totally not having chemistry with someone and you're not like physically passionate. Like it's pretty easy to just focus and do your own thing. I feel like when you have that like physical passion, that sexual component, hormones kind of make your... Um, Make your emotions a bit more chaotic. So, I mean, enjoy the passionate aspect of this connection for sure. Then we have this card, which says, look inside yourself. Absolutely. Examine what is causing you to feel this way. Mm, you both need to do some, some inner looking, some inner reflection, meditation, and focus. I can't, I've said this so many times when you're reading, focus on yourself. Okay, focus on what pours energy back into you. I think, you know, this situation will unfold naturally and you will get the answers that you are looking for. And I honestly do think you're going to get those answers in the next three months, but only if you listen to the advice in this reading. Like if you keep pushing and putting too much attention and guys, I'm not asking you to play games either. Like I'm not saying like ghost this person or like make them feel bad, you know, I'm saying naturally, naturally in your life, take a good hard look at who and what is pouring energy back into you and invest energy appropriately. Okay. I don't think this person, and this is something you would feel, you would confirm with me, you know, this would feel right. I don't think this person is investing as much as you are investing. That doesn't mean they don't like you. Okay, I, again, we see the passion here. They love you. I, I'm really getting that they love you. But for whatever reason, they can't offer as much as you can offer. I also, I kind of feel like it's because they're not on the same level as you. You know, they need to kind of focus on them and get their help, you know, grow themselves. But yeah, I don't know. I feel guided to stop your reading here. Um, next three months, a lot of changes will actually happen. I mean, don't be afraid by the iciness of this, the not moving forward energy of this, because this actually is moving forward. It's just, it will move forward in more psychological, spiritual ways. Like there might not be motion on the surface, but underneath that surface, things are moving all because you're, you're focusing more on yourself and your own mind is going to change. You're going to change your wants, your needs, your desires, your perception of this connection of your love life in the next three months drastically. And you're changing it to a point where you're more peaceful. You're more balanced. You don't feel like you have to constantly protect and defend yourself and like bring up conversations, like pour more energy into me, bring, you know, do more for me, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, you're pulling your energy back. Like I already told you what I need. You're not offering it. You're not offering as much energy, time, and attention that I am offering you. I'm pulling my energy back to meet you where you're at. And as you do that, you know, you will gain insights about this person, about the future, and you'll get that clarity. I feel like that's what you really need, clarity. Just knowing where this is going, knowing what's happening, and you will unlock it if you take the advice here, okay? Thank you guys for joining me. I know this has been kind of a complicated reading. Listen, it's it's your life, not mine. I don't know what to tell you. Subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Comment how this resonated down below. And I will see you for the next video. Bye. Okay, group number two. Let's dive into your reading and see what is in store for you in love for the next three months. You guys got a very frustrating rune for me. <laughs> You got Tiwas. This is what it looks like upright, but it came out exactly, exactly like not upright, not inverted. So, oh my gosh, I already have the chills from this. This rune is a rune that represents justice and honoring your commitment. So it's a pretty big deal to get in a love reading, right? So 
This is a very masculine rune. It's kind of named after the Norse god of war and justice. And so it is said that if you're a, a feminine person, okay, so a woman or someone who's more feminine or identifies with feminine energy a lot, and you get this rune upright, it can represent a really passionate relationship, lots of great sex, and, you know, so passionate, it might ignite jealousy and domination, um, and you might actually have to sacrifice quite a lot to be with this person, but if you feel in your heart and soul that they're good and they're worth it, it's a sacrifice you're more than willing to make. Now, in reverse, <laughs> this rune... It has that same energy of passion and romance and commitment, but it is all marked with like a little bit of underhandedness and selfishness, dishonorable motivations, and it can actually show betrayal by said person that you're in a relationship with. So having this rune come out sideways is really frustrating for me because I'm just like, which one is it? <laughs> I think that's for your intuition to decide, but what we do 100% see here is lots of passion, okay? Definitely, like, your love life is not dry <laughs> the next three months, that is for sure. Um, so many feelings, so much lust, so many hormones, and big commitments in question the next three months. You know, this rune can actually represent marriage, because, like, this is all about honoring your commitments and not making commitments lightly, okay? Because when you break those commitments that are really firm, bad karma <laughs> will be reaped, okay? You don't sit here and promise marriage, long-term, lifelong commitment to someone lightly. Because when you break that... Okay, and I'm, you know, I'm not against divorce. I think divorce is actually a really good thing, but that's a conversation for another day. You know, giving a lifelong commitment to someone and then not honoring it, even if, you know, you're the one to break up with someone, you know, if your partner's the one that's not pouring energy into the relationship, they're cheating, they're just not being a partner, they're the ones that really broke it, you know? We're talking big commitments here, guys. Don't make promises you can't keep. That is the message of this rune. And I'm not, I don't feel like I'm talking to you. I feel like I'm talking to you and whoever you're dealing with, both of you, okay? Don't make promises you cannot keep. And some of you guys might be contemplating this right now yourself. Like maybe you're a more masculine person, okay? And you know, you could be a woman. You can identify as a woman. You can wear skirts. You can wear makeup, be totally girly and still have majority masculine energy. You might be the one contemplating, do I want to commit to this person, whoever you're dealing with? Okay. Can I give them that commitment without breaking it? Whatever the commitment is. Okay. Can I actually do this? Can I offer this? And taking a good hard look at what you want, what you can offer, are they worth it, etc. Really taking a good hard look at these things and making a logical decision. Okay. Um, mm. Some of you guys might be getting married, might be contemplating marriage, might be contemplating like getting into a more committed relationship with someone you've been seeing recently. Oh, there's just so much energy. It's kind of hard to read into because the emotions are so strong here. So much passion, fiery, fiery passion coming from your love life in the next three months. Also, if you're going through any legal issues, some of you might be actually going through a divorce. Um, we see that being resolved in the next three months or making, you know, big, big resolvements. Here's the thing. When TWAS comes up in a reading, there will be favorable energies on the side of the just, okay? So if you're someone who keeps your commitments, you know, you, you've, you don't make promises you can't keep. You love fiercely and you're very emotionally open and, you know, you're a good partner, whatever. You're going to have a great three months. If you don't do that, it's going to suck. All right. It's going to suck. But let's see. I think we definitely need the tarot to kind of <laughs> clarify what's going on here because 
the fact that this came out totally neutral is just bothering the heck out of me because it's like, is this someone worth it or are they not worth it? Like, that's the big question here. There's so much passion and love and romance. Are they worth the commitment? Are they committed? Okay, some of y'all are dealing with jealousy. You just don't know if they're committed or not. And you can't discern if they're just a bad person or if you're just a jealous person. <laughs> it's a little confusing, a little confusing. I think that's why it came out sideways. So let's see what's going on here. We're going to pick eight cards and just kind of see what the story is for the next three months for y'all. Whew, the energy strong, strong for you guys. In, in good news, you know, the passion's there. You know, your physical love life is thriving. Definitely not boring. All right, first card out. Queen of Pentacles, love that for you. So this can show you or your partner or both. Okay, Earth energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And, you know, this is really... I think you're taking the advice that I gave group number one, which is just focusing on you, focusing on your bread, on your home, on your thriving, glowing success. And because you, you don't give too much of your energy away, you do invest wisely into your own energy. You actually have an abundance of energy to give back to other people. You know, you make sure your needs are met first. And then once they're met, then you can, you know, start pouring your excess energy into other relationships. And it creates a really good life for you. The queen of pentacles is someone who actually really thrives with commitment. You know, they want the security of a committed relationship <clears throat> of, you know, perhaps combining lives with someone, being partners with someone, marriage, um, having that title, you know, this is someone who's not super duper comfortable in situationships where it's like undefined. What are we, you know, queen of pentacles is someone who really does, you know, like that security of knowing where they stand with someone, knowing what the commitment is, actually talking about it, figuring things out. So that is something that is in the energy of the next three months, you know, commitment, what are we clarifying commitments, etc. We have harm, harmonious change, <laughs> two of pentacles, lots of financial commitment, physical energy here. Again, I want to say if any of you are going through a divorce, y'all might be getting what you deserve. Okay. Whatever that is. <laughs> and for the most of you, I think that's money. <laughs> I think that's what you want. Your fair share of things. Okay. Or custody or whatever it may be. Like you're getting what you deserve. You're getting, and in a good way, like you, you have good thing. You have good karma here. You keep your commitments. You have good karma. You're getting what you deserve. So if you are going through some type of legal battle, custody, divorce, we see a fair trial happening here. Okay. On your side, two of pentacles coming out. And this is balance. This is trying to give what you receive and nothing more, nothing less. Okay. You, you have a good head on your shoulders. And I think despite the insane emotions and passions, you're trying to approach this connection or whatever's going on in your life in a very balanced way. Like you are trying to handle this relationship or whatever is going on with a lot of finesse. Okay. Yin and yang peace. The sun's coming out. Beautiful. Stunning. Again, I really want to say if you're going through a custody battle, you will be happy with the result. Um, the sun is just a really happy card, guys. You know, I'm not surprised this is coming out with Tiwaz. Very happy, happy, high energy, love, passion, commitment. It's all kind of in the air right now. Mm. Yeah. Also, lots of outdoor physical activities going on here, like going out, having a fun time, going on fun dates. I'm seeing like a winery. I'm seeing rock climbing. I'm And this could be for whoever's watching. It won't apply to every single person. Like I'm seeing fun outdoorsy things, you know, with your person. And it really brings you closer together. And I feel like as a couple, when you go out and try new things, it really ignites more of that passion. So I'm just seeing like an abundance of passion and, and love and romance going on here, to be honest. Like this is not a dry relationship. Happiness. 
There is a complicating factor here, though. Um, if you were to commit to this person, there's something complicated here. Like maybe you have a kid or kids or they have a kid or kids and like you're not both the parents. So kind of navigating how to fit that into each other's lives and taking that decision very seriously because you don't want your child or children or family or whoever to, you know, be on an emotional roller coaster relationship again, I want to say. Um, so that is a little bit complicated. There might also be some other complication if it's not children, like maybe where you're living or working or your job situation, like maybe somebody has to move for their job and it's just like, that's a really big commitment to move with them. Is it worth it? Et cetera. Like there's some type of complicating factor in this that requires a lot of commitment if you want these happy, passionate times to continue. So that's kind of on your mind right now. Like, are they worth it? Are they worth this huge commitment? Ten of swords reversed. Ruin. Ten of swords reversed. Okay. Here's a card that looks scary, but it's actually kind of positive because it isn't reversed. You've already reached like the bottom of the barrel in terms of love. <laughs> you've already been with them. I feel I want I feel guided to say your ex-husband <laughs> or your ex. You you've already been to the bottom of the barrel in terms of partners, okay? You've learned your lesson. I really want to say that you've learned your lesson. You learned what to look out for. You learned the red flags. And spirit's really saying, have a little bit more faith in yourself that you you know what to do if you encounter those people again. I almost feel guided to say like there's a lot of kind of fear at the bottom of all this passionate, loving energy because you've been in bad relationships. And it's just like, I don't want to commit really deeply and then end up hurt again. You know, I'm seeing many of you watching are like divorced or like you've been through some big betrayal, like cheating. And it's like, you have this fear now, almost like relationship PTSD of opening back up, offering this high level commitment again, and then having it fall through. And I feel like that's why this is on its side, you know, there's some healing that needs to take place within you. And that's also why some jealousy may encounter, you might encounter some jealousy in this relationship through yourself. You know, you're the jealous one and it's because you've been hurt before. And, you know, now your subconscious mind has this like immediate reaction. Like, Oh, is this dangerous? Is this dangerous? Are they going to do this again? Am I going to go through these bad things again? And you need to take a chill pill group number two. I think you are dealing with some, relationship PTSD which is clouding your judgment when it comes to whatever situation you're dealing with over the next three months whatever new person or person or old person or whoever you're dealing with a previous heartbreak is clouding your judgment I just had the song another love pop into my head um it's a wonderful song. Beautiful crescendo. <laughs> okay, go look it up. It's called Another Love. I forget the name of the artist. I think his name is Tom something. Beautiful song. It's essentially about wanting to fall in love, wanting to be in love, but he has been hurt so badly in the past that like it's like all of my tears have been used up. Uh, you know, all of my energy has been used up on this old relationship. I don't have anything to offer to a new relationship, which is what I want. So I think that song might have a lot of messages in it for you, but there is definitely some healing going on here, some complicated emotions. We have the King of Cups in reverse. Why does this keep coming out? This came out for group number one. This is a little scary to get in reverse, y'all. A little scary. Take your time is what I want to say with this relationship. You know, enjoy this honeymoon phase. Enjoy the, the sunny energy. If you're not 100% secure and certain about whether you should make a commitment right now, you know, take your time with it. There's no need to rush. You know, that's what I want to say. I am getting some confusion here. It's like you can't tell if they're a good or bad person yet. Time will illuminate that for you, okay? Mm. This is like, am I in danger? You know, take things slowly. Keep focusing on your coin, on your happiness, on, on what you got going on. Trust is something that you build over time. So, and I feel like time does reveal everything about a person, especially in the first three years of being with someone. So I want to say take your time here. We have the two of swords reversed, which also came out for group number one as well. 
peace. This is protecting your heart. I see a lot of this going on for you. It's like you don't want to move forward quite yet because you're protecting your heart. You're not sure if it's safe yet. You're not sure if it's safe to open up. You've been hurt before. See how she's in a protective stance with her arms. And she's like not letting anyone in her heart. You know, eyes are closed, blindfolded. And the water in the background represents the emotions. My cats are literally growling at each other. I feel like this person is giving you all the signs that this is going to be a long-lasting relationship. It's going to be great. You're going to stay in the sunny energy with them. But a part of you is just not 100% certain and convinced right now. I think that's the problem. So let's see what the other cards are. We have the hero font. Big old commitment. This is the card of marriage. This is the card of commitment happening. Also, this is the card of mentors. You know, I really do think that if you don't already have it, um, you might actually benefit from like a relationship therapist or a personal therapist or some type of person who can guide you through these feelings. Because I feel that you have really complicated feelings. And especially if you've recently gone through a really big betrayal or breakup before this relationship, it is only natural for you to have really complicated emotions and feelings in a new relationship. And it might help you to talk through that with some type of therapist, life coach, relationship therapist, counselor, whatever. Like that might actually really, really help you. Or if you can't afford that, just getting books, okay, on, on like relationships, like literally some self-help books will help you. Um, watching videos or going to friends who are really emotionally intelligent, but be careful, you know, the friends you choose. That's what I want to say. Um, there's healing going on here. I think other people can really be your mentor right now. Um, I, I It's just like navigating commitment. You know, do I open up to them? Do I commit? That's the big question of the day. <laughs> and we have the Empress. Beautiful, beautiful card. Stunning wonderful came out for group number one but in reverse you got upright which is beautiful I think having the empress having the sun card come out having the hero font having the queen of pentacles you have a lot of good cards here that are shining a light in your love life over the next three months but here's the thing I want to say nothing is black or white you know no relationship is black or white, like completely bad or completely good. And I feel like this kind of shows that a lot. Like it is a really good, passionate relationship. Lots of fun memories. This person has a lot to offer you. And at the same time, there is some healing going on here. You know, there is a little bit of trust issues that need to be resolved and trust that needs to be built. And this is something that you should work through with your partner. You know, if you're having a hard time trusting and not being jealous, like that's something that you should be working on in the relationship with your partner or with, a, I'm literally seeing relationship counseling here of some sort. If you can't afford it, like there's tons of like, activities and worksheets and things that you can find online that is kind of helpful for your relationship. I'm seeing two people here in front of someone who knows how to guide them. Okay. Might be really, really helpful. You know, it, it's the, I'm seeing issues that need to be worked through in this relationship. You know, your own traumas, relationship, PTSD, jealousy. Um, I just kind of like not knowing if you can trust them. They need to build some trust. You need to learn how to trust and these issues can be worked through together. And I feel like as you work through these issues and as time goes on, and guys, I'm not talking like 10 years, y'all, like this is just time in general, you know, it could be a few weeks. Um, you'll become a lot more clear. Like this little halfway thing here, like, do I trust them? Do I not trust them? Is this the real deal? It will definitely become up or down, like yes or no. I can definitely trust this person. I definitely can't trust this person. That will be illuminated as you work through these relationship issues, okay? Is this person actually working with you? Are they actually trustworthy? Sometimes I think we tend to see our partners in really negative lights when we've been hurt in the past because we're seeing them through the lens of our trauma, and our subconscious mind triggers so much jealousy, so much like, oh, can you trust them? Can you trust them? Um, that needs to be worked through. So, I mean, it's not a black or white situation. I think you go through those things. All right. Moving on to the Oracle. Mama Moon, 
beautiful spirit guide for relationships. What does she have to say about your love life in the next three months? Confidence is your key to success. New moon in Leo. Yeah. Work on your own mental health group number two. Confidence is your key to success, especially if you're dealing with a little bit of jealousy. Okay. Focusing on your own confidence and things that can build that confidence, your own mental health um, is the healing balm to jealousy is what I want to say there. We have messages from the romance angels engagement coming through. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Yeah, I definitely feel that because the whole, like I'm almost getting like cold feet energy from you. <laughs> like, are they worth it? Are they worth the the big commitment? And however your commitment is elevating will look different for everyone. Some of you might literally be getting engaged or moving in with someone or making a bit like a big level of commitment coming through. Are they worth it? That's kind of the energy that I'm getting here. Worth waiting for divine timing is that work in your love life. Don't make any rash decisions when you're in this cloudy state of confusion. Okay work through it. And we have past life relationship. This explains the passion. You have known each other before. Definitely. Like this is someone who triggers so many emotions in you, so much passion, so much sunlight energy. Just there's a remembrance, a recognition of their soul and your soul. Beautiful. So don't throw this relationship out just because you're feeling a little triggered is what I want to say. Overall, the energy I'm getting is pretty good. I think you both have some issues you need to work on. King of Cups reverse, they might be a little bit emotionally standoffish as well. I, I don't know. I'm just, if you can afford it, I'm telling you relationship therapy might be the key to success here <laughs> or something equivalent. Okay. You both need to kind of work on your mental health a bit and prepare for, if you're going to ascend to a higher level of commitment, like put in the work in this relationship to make sure that, you know, you're both ready and trusting for that. You know what I mean? Like, I think so many people operate their relationships from such a like unconscious point of view where they just like kind of do stuff without thinking about it. Put a lot of intentionality into the levels of commitment you're doing, you know? If you're going to move in together, sit down and figure out how this can be the easiest transition possible for the both of you. If you're going to get married, do some like pre-marriage counseling or something. You know, do whatever you can to make this relationship successful. Work through the issues that are being triggered from this relationship. I think, you know, that's just a normal thing for everybody. If you've been hurt before, if you've been betrayed before, no one talks about this. The next relationship after you've been hurt can sometimes trigger trust issues. And you kind of confuse, like, can I trust them? Can I not trust them? They could be a perfectly trustworthy person who's wonderful for you, like your soulmate, but when you're viewing the relationship from the lens of trauma, you might not be able to see that. So let's get a final message from the lover's oracle. You had a card fall on the floor because why not? <laughs> and this is the card. And, it, and again, we see the yin and yang symbol coming out all over your reading. Look at that. Balance, equal give and take, harmony, peace. Masculine and feminine. Balance. Love is not always about agreeing just for the sake of it. A great relationship is one that both supports and challenges. Yeah, I think you're honestly, a lot of you are in a great relationship that is challenging you to grow, to heal. You know, the issues that are coming up in this relationship are kind of testing your commitment to the relationship and to your own self, your own mental health and all that, you know. A great relationship is one that supports you and also challenges you. Keep that in mind. A great relationship is not going to be easy all the time. There will be issues that come up for you to work through and through going over those issues, you grow. And I think that's what's happening here right now. So beautiful stuff. Next three months in your love life overall, we see lots of passion, lots of fun memories, lots of happiness, lots of romance, okay? And we also see a lot of healing, a lot of conversations and just growing together and figuring out stuff. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you for the next video. Bye. Group number three, welcome. Let's figure out what is going to happen to you in the next three months in love. So the rune that came out for you is Awaz, and this is a beautiful rune for a love reading because it represents two horses moving in tandem towards the same direction. So when you get this, this rune upright, it is showing you and someone of significance who has the same vision
vision in life, who are both moving forward to the same places. And also, this is a rune a forward movement. So the next three months, there will be actually a lot of forward momentum in your love life. So that's a beautiful, beautiful message. And especially finding people in your life who are just vibrating at the same frequency as you. I don't know how else to put it. Like moving at the same pace as you, wants to move at the same pace as you, you know, this is someone who shares a vision and I, I'm seeing a lot of travel and actual movement. So you might be going on a lot of adventures with this person or actually moving or planning a move. If you're in the process of moving and you're currently single, your move might prove useful for your love life. Like you might actually find love in this new location or in the process of moving, if that makes sense. So lots of travel, lots of movements, lots of moving at the same pace. And I'm seeing like high energy pace as well. Like maybe you're the type of person who likes doing things spontaneously. Like maybe you always wanted to travel, but maybe you were with someone for a while who hated traveling or none of your friends want to travel. And then you find this person who also wants to travel and they take the initiative and they help plan a trip with you. And it's like actually happening. So I'm seeing lots of fun forward movement in your love life, which is always great to see. Also, I'm seeing someone who together you actually go further than when you're separate. Does that make sense? So when you're with this person, you actually get a lot more done in life and you experience more in life as opposed to when you're alone. And I think that's the mark of a healthy relationship. You know, partnerships, you should be coming together and achieving more together and growing more together than you are like tearing each other apart. Does that make sense? So like all of the partnerships in your life, they should be offering you something. You should be better because they're in your life as opposed to worse because they're in your life. And I feel like this person's going to surprise you with how much you guys can both grow and experience together. Like, and your unique qualities come together in a way that just makes a lovely, lovely partnership. Like maybe you always are down for an adventure, for example, but you hate planning things. And this person loves planning, but never has anyone who's down to adventure. So it's like you perfectly complement each other, if that makes sense. Okay, lots of fun memories, though. I'm seeing lots of outings, lots of dates in the next three months, lots of just going out and living life to the fullest. So let's clarify this message. We will pull eight tarot cards today and kind of just get the story about your love life over the next three months. So let's see what comes out for you. It's kind of hard to tell in this group whether the majority of you are single or in a relationship. Um, I'm feeling a lot of single people here though. And this is just going out, dating in general, going out, having fun adventures in general. It doesn't even have to be with one specific person. It could be with multiple people if you're kind of dating around right now. But I think in the next three months, you will actually find someone who wants to move at the same pace as you, who wants the same things as you, if you are single. If you recently met someone, you know, you just, you're the hard eye emoji for them. <laughs> you are just are moving at the same pace. I don't know how else to put it. And you're like movement, movement, movement. That is the idea here. Someone really strong-willed and you're strong-willed. Like I'm getting strong energy. None of you are wallflowers in life. Like you go out and live your best life and you're able to do that together. And it's like this person matches your energy and it just totally amplifies your life. Like your life force energy is doubled when this person is around. So a lot more can get done. We have the devil reversed as your first card out. So I'm not going to lie. This is giving me like BDSM vibes. <laughs> The devil in reverse is a good card because it kind of shows breaking out of abuse or I want to say narcissistic abuse specifically. So both of you might be in a spot in life where maybe you're not even like super duper into relationships at this time because you both have come from a relationship that was a bit narcissistic or like you're healing from some type of abuse or just really toxic um, friendships, relationships, etc. Some type of mental health issues or addictions. You're coming out of that and you were both kind of really healthily focused on yourselves. And it's kind of like you almost stumbled into this love, if that makes sense. And I feel you stumbling into this love. And it's not even like it was unintentional. You know, some of you guys might have literally met this person on a dating app very intentionally, 
but you didn't really have intentions for it to go any further than it would. Like maybe you were just kind of meeting new people, not really, I don't know, just kind of seeing what's out there, I guess. And it's kind of like you're realizing how similar you are. Like you're both down for adventure. You're both high energy, like movement. You know, you both don't like sitting still. You both like constantly improving yourselves and you're both self-help kings and queens. Okay. So it's really beautiful, but I'm also seeing like a strong compatibility, like physically. Um, so you might share some preferences in the, in the bedroom, in the boudoir. Um, that's always fun. Also, I'm seeing like matched energy levels physically being a good thing. Like maybe if you're someone who really likes working out or rock climbing or hiking, like this person will do that with you. And I think that's something really important for you that you might not have even realized is important for you to have matched in the people around you. We have the nine of cups, material happiness. This is a really, really good card of just personal happiness. Um, mental health is improving. I want to say that financial circumstances are improving in the next three months. And I'm just getting this energy of individuality, strangely enough, like financial security, being happy on your own, doing your own thing. You know, I'm seeing someone here has like their own little apartment that they like and they decorate it the way that they want. And, you know, you just have your own little life going for you. And it's in that personal happiness that love kind of stumbles upon you. It's like very unintentional almost. Like you weren't even searching for it and here it has found you, you know? It's just happy circumstances. And I think if you've been experiencing blockages in your love life, that is your key, you know? Pretend like you're never gonna meet anyone ever again for the rest of your life. How would you make yourself happy, okay? Even if you're in a long-term relationship already, you have no plans of going anywhere, Let's imagine that you're single and you're never going to find anyone ever for the rest of your life. What would you do to make yourself happy? Those are your key steps to manifesting more love externally because those steps are loving yourself and making your life as an individual the happiest it could be. And through acquiring those steps and doing those things, whatever they may look like, external love will find you naturally. So I'm kind of seeing you both taking care of yourself, you know, self-help, getting your money, mental health, physical health, whatever together. And then this love story just kind of naturally unfolds. This might be a situation where you start off as friends and then it kind of just naturally weirdly turns romantic, or maybe you're just like friends with benefits. You don't really care about each other that much at first. <laughs> you like each other, of course, but you know, it's not a deep, serious thing. And then it kind of, you know, naturally unfolds. Like you really prioritize that friendship part of friends with benefits. And then it turns into something more. Um, we have the Ace of Swords in reversed. Okay. So I'm not really seeing a conversation. This is like just totally naturally unfolding. I'm seeing very unintentional love, if that makes sense. So intentional love would be like, you know what? I think I have enough space in my life for a partner. I'm going to go out and I'm going to date. I'm going to kind of like interview people, make sure we're compatible and then go from there and then let the relationship unfold naturally when we know that we both want the same things. And then, you know, over a couple of months, we can be committed and like kind of that is intentional dating. Like I know what I want. I'm getting it. Okay. And it's kind of like interviewing <laughs> people and then allowing yourself to enjoy the relationship when you realize that you're compatible. Really cool way to date. Highly recommend it. Especially if you're someone prone to um, bad relationships, date intentionally. I am not seeing that here though. I'm seeing this is very unintentional. You're just kind of doing your own thing and this just unfolds very naturally. There's no conversation, like no first date interview. It's just really natural, naturally flowing. It's it's a free flowing thing that, and I don't feel like you've had a conversation with this person about where you're going quite yet, if that makes sense. Like I'm almost seeing that for many of you watching, this is just a situation where you're just enjoying it, but you're not really communicating about the future <laughs> just yet, okay? We have the five of cups in reverse. Yeah, guys, you this relationship starts unfolding as you both release the past, okay? You're both turning around and getting better mental health, I want to say, improving your mindset, you know, going from a negative mindset to a positive mindset and kind of asking yourself to look at the bright side in life, you know, focus on what you can do right now on the friends that do exist. And again, kind of viewing your, your life internally as in like, I'm going to be single forever, even if you're in a relationship. 
And what can I do to make myself happy? And then in the process of doing that, this love unfolds greatly. And it's like all of your questions and lack of direction in your love life um, unfolds for you. It's really great. And we see in the five of cups reversed, you know, this is showing someone with fallen cups, you know, endings that didn't work out, relationships that didn't work out. They weren't all positive. Two of them are wine. One of them was poisoned, right? And they're looking at these cups falling over, you know, worrying, all sad, mourning the loss of these relationships. When this card's in reverse, it's really positive because he's turning around and he's seeing the cups that are right behind him. He's seeing the relationships, the friendships that he has in his life. He's going to focus on the love that does exist rather than the love that doesn't exist. He's going from a lack mindset where he's focusing on what he doesn't have to a abundance mindset where he's focusing on what he does have, what he can do in the present moment. And this goes beyond relationships. This can be like money, for example. Instead of focusing on the money you don't have, you know, focus on the opportunities you have in the present moment to make more money. Focus on the blessings and material abundance you already have. Get yourself into that abundance mindset and you'll be unstoppable. So when this is in reverse, you're both in this state of like coming out of that negative thinking, healing from mental health issues. And I'm seeing so much similarities between you. I wouldn't be surprised if you both had like really similar astrological charts. So maybe your sun sign's the same or your moon or your rising or your Venus, or there's just a lot of the same energies here. Like you're a very similar person. Mm. I especially want to, um, say your Mars might be significant or very similar. If they're not the same sign, they might be similar because I'm seeing a lot of compatibility in your temperament and energy levels. All right. So we have the six of wands in reverse. Victory is coming. Your life is building positive momentum. Okay. The next three months in general, and it's interesting. This is a love reading. I'm not seeing a ton of lovey-dovey messages here. This reading is really talking about kind of doing your own thing and building your own success story. And in the process, love is there. Does that make sense? And I feel like you're connecting with someone who's also focusing on their success and you're both working towards a goal individually as well as together, possibly, but definitely individually. Like maybe you're focusing on building a business and so are they, or you're really focused on getting healthy and so are they, or you're really focused on saving up for a house and so are they, like whatever it is, I see you're both kind of working towards big goals here separately and you're both really passionate about that goal and then you kind of come to each other for support, like you talk about your own little lives individually together and it's a really healthy friendship, really healthy friendship that has romantic spark, sparks a flying. And I feel like with the devil in reversed, this is giving me friends with benefits energy. Like this is someone who really does prioritize the friend part of the uh, friends with benefits thing here. You know, this isn't some douche who's like, yeah, we could be friends with benefits. And then like literally only hits you up to have sex with you. Like, no, this is someone who actually does value that friendship. <laughs> and I feel like none of you had super strong long-term, oh my God, I want to be with this person forever feelings. It was very natural. It was very growing over time. And I just think that as time goes on, you start to realize that you guys are really similar. You have similar temperaments, you know, and this might've all happened in the past and you're just currently dealing with this person. I'm just going over the story and whether the story is in the past, present or future, it'll be different for all of you. But that's the story that I'm seeing here. Like you start out as friends, some benefits get involved, you know, not really planned. Again, unintentional dating. And then you just over time realize how compatible you are. So, but yeah, definitely both building your own victory story. We have the five of wands reversed strife. Interesting. So this is a card of change. This is a card of conflict and drama. I am kind of getting another vision here. I feel like the people who were in your lives at the time that you met are no longer in your lives. So for, and it, this could be a shared group or separate groups. So for example, like let's say you met like half a year ago, their friends or relationships that were around them at the time that you met might have fallen apart and they might be restructuring their social group or vice versa. This could be your story as well. Or say you started out as friends and had a shared friend group 
that friend group may no longer be in the picture. Does that make sense? I'm seeing strife in your friendships or families individually since you met this person. So like who used to be in your lives are no longer in your lives, but you two still stand. Okay. Interesting. We have the three of cups reversed, and this is giving me that energy for sure. Okay. Definitely have some friendship falling out energy coming here. You know, the three of cups is a card of celebration coming together. Um, it's, it's really the beautiful abundance of kinship and friends who feel like family, but in reverse, it's kind of like no longer, you know, it's like you're excluded from that group. You're no longer in each other's lives. So I, and again, we're seeing cancer energy come up again. Did I even mention cancer energy in the first place? I'm seeing the cancer Capricorn axis being of significance for some reason. So there may be strong placements there for either of you, but I feel like I need to clarify this message because it's like, were you guys friends and now it's like getting confusing um, or were there some falling out with friends? Let's see what the last card is before I clarify. Two of Swords piece. This has come out for every single group. I'm not even exaggerating. Group number one, it came out in the same exact spot too, only theirs was reversed. Yours is upright, which is great. Three of Cups reversed is giving me non-monogamous energy and I'm feeling like you're aware that it's non-monogamous. <laughs> Just had a tongue twister moment. I feel like you're aware of the non-monogamous nature. Like you're not committed to each other. Many of you, this is a friends with benefits. So Spirit, can we clarify the Five of Wands reversed and the Three of Cups reversed here? Ace of Swords reverse can also show that maybe you just didn't have that conversation to clarify where this is going or commit to each other. And again, if this doesn't resonate, like don't force it to resonate, y'all. Maybe if, if like none of these messages are really hitting it with you, go back and select another group or maybe there's just no messages for you in today's readings. But I don't want to sit here and tell you you're in a non-monogamous situation thinking that you're in a monogamous situation and you're like, what the heck? That's news to me. Like, no, no, no. Don't force it to resonate if it doesn't. Okay. Just want to clarify that. But I am seeing some more playful, fun energy. Like you can technically see whoever you want and see this person right now. That's the energy I'm getting. Like it's not committed yet. So Spirit, can you clarify the Three of Cups in reverse? I feel like the like friendship versus romance, like the line there is very blurred for this connection. So if you know who I'm talking about, that is who you will be predominantly dealing with in your love life in the next three months. That's kind of what we're getting at, okay? Let's see. That was a lot of shuffling. We have the Knight of Wands reversed. Yeah, okay. This is, again, non-committal energy. You're not committed to this person. It's very free. Now, some of you guys might have agreed to this. Like, this might be an ethically non-monogamous relationship where you agreed, yeah, we're not going to be romantically exclusive. We can see whoever we want. Totally fine. I'm in a relationship like that. I totally get it. But this is what we're dealing with here. You're, you're in a very fun, sensual friendship with someone with romantic energies and you're both individually building your own success story and possibly healing and overcoming. And I honestly think that's beautiful, especially if either of you don't 100% feel ready for a full-blown committed relationship. Like, I think this is a really beautiful connection to be having. It's very healing. It's super supportive. And, you know, society can tell us how to have our relationships, but, you know, do what is best for you. Do what you want to do. Find your peace, even if it doesn't look like other relationships or what other people's connections look like. But I do feel like there is some sense of boundaries up in this connection because you're not committed, because, you know, you didn't have that serious conversation. You know, there is a little bit of protecting your heart, protecting your heart space and kind of not trying to keep them at an arm's length, but, you know, just trying to keep yourself in check, your emotions in check and not start treating them like you're in a relationship if you're not in a relationship. That's the energy I'm getting. So you are protecting your peace. You're protecting your peace while enjoying this fun connection and healing from the past and working towards your greatest future. Okay. Does that make sense? Also along the way of this connection, we had some falling offs with friends, 
So that's just what happened here. All right. I do want to say for, I literally think it's only one person watching. Okay. My, maybe two, but there's one person watching here where this is an unethical non-monogamous situation. Like they are cheating. You are cheating. And to that, I say, <laughs> it's just not a good situation to be in. It's just not a good situation to be in. If you are aware that that is happening and the other person is whoever it is, your partner, or their partner is not aware that that's happening. I would take a good hard look at how you approach relationships and ask yourself, you know, how you can get your needs met and take care of yourself in an ethical way. You might have to make some challenging decisions have some hard conversations, but if you're too afraid to have hard conversations, you should not be in any relationship. Boom. Okay. Moving on. That was for like one or two people. Sorry. Had to hand you it. If you can't have hard conversations, you should not be in a relationship. And if you cannot treat people with respect and agree to the terms and conditions of your relationship, then you should renegotiate said relationship and not get what you want in an unethical way. Everyone else, totally, perfectly fine, normal situation here. Um, I do want to say that if you want something more committed, and honestly, I don't really get that vibe from a lot of you, <laughs> or not a lot of you, but like, you know, there probably is a lot of you watching who want something more serious here, and this person has not really, you haven't really crossed that bridge with this person yet, like you haven't had that conversation yet, next three months might be a good time to bring it up, you know, don't keep on... Like, don't hold emotions back. This person really does feel like they are a good, good, supportive friend. They will listen to you. They will work with you. That's the energy I'm getting. So if you want something more serious with this person, all you have to do is talk to them. Like, don't be a little wimp about it, okay? <laughs> That's what I'm getting. All right, Mama Moon's coming through with some messages. Next three months, love life. She is saying nothing will come of the situation. Avoid, of course, Moon. Now, here's the interesting thing. <laughs> I can kind of see this. I am seeing this in a very lighthearted way. Like, I feel so lighthearted right now. Like, maybe you know nothing will come of this situation, but you're just enjoying it in the present moment. Does that make sense? Like, this relationship, there, there's no talks of the future. There's no talks of this going anywhere. You're just in your lighthearted, playful energies as you're focusing on your own life and as you're healing from the past, I guess. And kind of building your own future. You know, this is like a lighthearted connection. That's like a good friend. It feels like they're at a friend level. But I just want to reaffirm that you're both on the same page. Because if you're viewing it in that lighthearted way, like I'm just focusing on me. This is like a fun friendship that's playful. And you, that person is viewing it as something more like you need to have a conversation. And, you know, not lead this person on. And vice versa. You know, if you want something more and you know that this person doesn't want something more, you need to have a hard conversation with your gosh darn self and make a tough decision there. All right. But overall, the energy that I'm getting for the next three months, very lighthearted, fun, etc. So if that's what you want, that's what you want. You know, it, it, you're going to have a fun time. Lots of new events, forward momentum, movements going on here, outings, fun, okay? Like new experiences going on here. Some of you guys might actually be moving, which is why you're viewing this connection as not serious because, it, you know, it's not going to be doable in the future. Like maybe you're moving far enough to where this connection will be doable, but you're just having fun in the meantime. You know, it doesn't have to have a future. It doesn't have to have this big, long term energy with it. It doesn't have to have expectations and commitment. It's just fun for now. That's the energy I'm getting. And you know, it's kind of tough to do this reading because I sense that most of you, you're pretty okay with the circumstances here. You're happy, but there are some people watching who are really triggered right now. I can feel it. Like you're not happy about this situation. Like, you know, deep in your soul that this is what it is. You know, this isn't something serious or your person is literally telling you this isn't serious. This is like a playful friendship, whatever. And you want something more. You have to have, be really real with yourself if that's the situation and have a conversation with this person and tell them that you can't do that. Okay. Mm. All right. Protect your peace. Whatever that looks like. <laughs> 
messages from the romance angels. We have chemistry. There's a strong magnetic attraction here. Yeah, I can totally see that. Totally see that. We have codependency. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. I feel like you're both healing from codependency together. You know, and honestly, okay, this is a weird reading. I don't get messages like this reading very often, but sometimes if you're someone who's prone to codependency, having casual connections and friendships can actually really help you. Um, like practice just not taking everything so seriously, not putting all of your needs and wants onto one person all the time, you know? So I feel like we are healing codependency with this connection in a way, or just even if this isn't one connection and you're just casually dating, just by casually dating, you kind of are healing your codependency and you're focusing on yourself, building up your success so that when you do want something more serious in the future, you know, you're already happy on your own. You're not going to fall prey to codependent relationships again. And then we have let your friends help you. Mm. Very, like I said, friend energy. This is a good friend, a very good friend for you. Very supportive and all that. Ask for and accept support from others. This person will totally understand um, whatever you need to talk about. You know, if you do catch feelings for them and want something more serious, you can talk to them about that. You know, they're not going to like offend you or anything like they really are a good friend so open up to them or maybe you already are open to them but I mean this is just a I love your reading group number three because it's just a beautiful connection however long it lasts it lasts like this is you have to be at a high level of um self-fulfillment mental health and maturity to have a connection like this I feel you know you really do because it's like you're loving unconditionally with no expectations you're just having fun in the present moment a lot of people struggle to do those things you know most people probably wouldn't successfully have a connection like this one but you either are able to do it or you don't want it and yet you find yourself in the situation trying to force yourself to be enjoying it like Regardless, you know what's best for you, group number three, and this is what I see for the next three months as of right now, so enjoy it, you know, enjoy the fun, enjoy the support, you know, make the most out of the support, and keep focusing on your happiness, your success. There's some really good physical chemistry and energy here, very playful, and I feel, you know, that's what life's all about. Like when you connect with other people, they unlock so many new creative ideas and experiences that you wouldn't be able to unlock on your own. And I feel like this relationship is kind of showing us that. Even if this is multiple relationships, you're just out there dating. Every person that you date, every person that you meet, they teach you something new. They give you a new experience, new ideas. And it's just really great. It's really great. And you're able to grow and be even more when there are more people like this in your life. So positive energy all around. Okay. So that is your reading. Take from it what resonated with you. Thank you for joining me. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you for the next video. Bye.